welcome back to Mobility Wad. Uh, today's episode um, is special for a lot of reasons. One, if you just pan over here for a second, this is a, this is a strange audience over here. You may know Jesse Burdick, tiny dancer. You may know uh, Mark Bell because of his uh, extensive freestyle uh, aquatic canoe interpretive <laughs> dancing. And then this is Chris Bell, uh, and he was freaking out a little bit because he's not directing the film about uh, what we're about to talk about. And the, if you I haven't mean, seen Bigger, Faster, Stronger, there it is. Bigger, okay. stronger, faster. Get it right. Oh my god, I mess up every time. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. See, what I did is I left you an opening to speak. Do you see how that? That's called go. direction. Good direction. Yeah, that's what's happening. <laughs> now, seriously, today uh, we're going to take on a topic that I have been reversed. I've reversed myself in the last year about how I feel about this. And from the work of some of our friends, we're going to do and, and talk uh, with the man who really kind of changed my mind. But really what we're going to talk about is how to, uh, the, some of the type 1 errors we've been making as a community for a long time, but how to deal with injury, about clearing swelling, and about helping the body does what it does best. We talk a lot about making adaptation errors in the human being. One of the adaptation errors we were fond of talking about is that you know, your heel should be flat on the ground. If it's not flat on the ground, that's an error. You've been evolving for two and a half million years. We've been solving the same set of problems for thousands of years, and over that two and a half million years, you have a pretty good system that sets up, and that, you know, that kind of works as a, as a basically makes you a perfect healing machine. And if we say we get right, correct movement, correct, correct adaptation, then you're a perfect healing machine. So when, as soon as we put pieces into position, like taking an, an anti-inflammatory when it's not appropriate, uh, as a pain mechanism device, then we can stop these inflammatory cascades, we can stop this, some, some of these inflammatory problems, and we end up dropping in a type 1 error or a rate limiter on our ability to be perfect human machine, healing machine. So, what we want to go, I want to do to introduce today is Gary. Can you talk about your background and who you are and how we became friends? Sure. Um, I had a chance to meet Kelly about a year ago, and I was asked to go and see him and explain the Mark Pro to him, which is a muscle recovery device. And when I first met him, uh, understandably, he didn't necessarily believe what I was going to tell him and what I was telling him about using the body as a pump to bring in nourishment and flush out waste. And that's... Garbage really out, safe. groceries in. Garbage out, groceries in. What a great line. Right. So here's, here's the concept is that the Mark Pro device that we've become very fond of and worked with a lot of our top athletes is, is a simple way to basically get the body to clear excess swelling. Is that, is that a, a simple way? Access, yeah. Or, or, or clear swelling, swelling that, that is, that's problematic. Okay, we shut that door real quick? Yeah, fine. So here's the deal. What we've got going on is that when you are injured or have tissue injury, we, we create a lot of swelling in the body as a, as a side effect of this, of this inflammatory cascade. That when you're injured, prostaglandin release goes out, and we're trying to call the circulating stem cells, some of those other tissues of the body, to come and heal that site. One of the problems with kind of non anti-inflammatory drugs or icing is that we cut that connection between the injured tissue and the, circ the circulating uh, body tissues that come and heal that site. So anytime we minimize the ability to kind of clear waste and bring in new nutrients and we can minimize that uh, or, or cut the connection between the injured cells and what's coming in, this is a problem. And this is what we've been doing with icing for long periods of time, right? For, or forever, as long as we've been icing, this is what we're basically stopping. If icing has a problem, its basic idea is wrong. That's right. And what happens is, I was with a trainer this week from a pro football team, and he asked me about icing and he said, well, are you saying it's not good? And I said, well, it depends. What are you using it for? He said, well, for inflammation. I said, to get more, to get less, keep it the same, what's your goal? He went, we'll get less. And I said, well, why do you want less? He said, well, you don't want too much inflammation. I said, well, do you, are you under the belief that your body doesn't know how to regulate that? And he said, well, no, no. I said, well, you're talking about healthy athletes, right? He said, yeah. I said, so you think you need to regulate the body's inflammatory response? You're better at it. In the body is. Two and a half million years in the working. And you're better at it. Right. And he said, well, no, yeah, but you don't want too much inflammation. I said, well, let's, let's talk for a second. What's too much? He said, well, you don't want a big old swollen ankle. So, okay, so that swelling at the end, that's the result of the end phase of the inflammatory process. That's not a problem. The evacuation of the waste at the end of the cycle, that apparently is the problem. So, what causes the evacuation of the waste at the end of the cycle? They just looked at me. I said, well, what causes it? How does it go we, away? We lift heavy weights sometimes we're not very strong. We're smart. Well, how, how, <laughs> how does it go away? 
It goes away through the lymphatic vessels. No, wait, that, that swelling particle isn't clear to the circulatory system. It's too no, big. It's too big. It's clear through lymphatics. Now look, if you haven't had physiology recently, your body has two systems of circulation. One is your circulatory system, that's your veins and heart and, and the arteries. The other system is your lymphatic system. The lymphatics are a set of one-way bags of, little, of, of fluid, of lymph, and all the drainage tissue uh, that you're trying to kind of dump back into superior vena cava, I think, if I remember right. But it's the muscle contraction and movement that squeezes those bags of lymph up the system to clear it up, right? Correct. So if I immobilize a joint or immobilize something because I can't move it, then what's my mechanism to clear the lymphatics? It doesn't. So what, wait a minute, wait a minute. So if I don't move, what happens? And it swells. Right, and it stays there. <laughs> and here's the problem, is that oftentimes an injured tissue is too painful to move. I can't move it. I've just avulsed my tendon, or something's gone on, or I have a really bad injury, or a fractured bone, so how am I gonna move that thing? I can try to flex my leg, or? Well, you can use a powered muscle stimulator to activate the muscles around the muscles in the area. You don't necessarily have to work on the area in question, just the region. For example, I had a pitcher or a, a player in baseball hit by pitch, and really a nasty hit. You could see this. You could see the lines from the ball, from the stitching, and it was about two and a half weeks out. He couldn't straighten his arm. The trainer brought me in and said, uh, "I think you can help this." I said, "Let me ask you a question. Will it ever go away in town?" And he said, "Well, sure." I said, "If you go like this." You go like that, for three to five hours a day, will go away sooner? And he said, well, of course. I said, the machine will work. And he said, well, you're awful confident. I said, give me your hand. Put a pad there, and a pad there, and a pad there, and a pad there, following the lymphatic trail. He turned him on, his arm was going like this. I said, tell me why that won't work. And he went, I can't think of a reason in the world that wouldn't work. I said, that's why I'm so confident. Now, by the way, he was hit by a pitch over here. But this is a highway back out, right? It's a highway back out. And if the, the negative pressure created around the vessels, that's how it's designed to work. It's a one-way system, like you mentioned. But more importantly, it's a one-way system nearly fully relying upon muscle activation around the vessels to push it. Well, activate the muscles around it, it pushes it out, but that also creates a negative pressure that pulls it out. There is no other way out There's except no way the out. movement. Uh, so I can compress. That works. It works some. But it's a one-time sort of compression deal, right? If I have congestion in the area, it's, it's hard to create as much movement as is required to keep pushing that out. If, if you try to do it manually, it's possible. The problem with manual is you have to, and you're not activating the muscles around the vessels. How much are you per hour to do this? Because this is really great. <laughs> so that's the problem, right? So if we take this paradigm that we've all grown up with, rice, Rest. This doesn't seem to make sense anymore, right? If I if I if I can't move, because rest means immobilization, means let's not use the tissues, let's let's let things become stagnant. The problem with resting is that I'm not pushing or getting movement in those tissues to drain that to the lymphatics. So that's well, actually the, the American County of Orthopedic Surgeons in 1999 put out a position statement <coughs> on loading or causing stress against the injured area. And it's fully concluded it's, it's the wrong path. Well, now, you don't want to hurt yourself, right. but you need to give a little bit of stress to help reorganize the repair tissue so that it becomes functional, or as one of my docs calls it, happy scar tissue. Otherwise, I end up with a scar ball. Yeah. So you're saying that in addition to being able to clear swelling in an area, if I hook up something like a Mark Pro or a muscle stimulator to be able to clean, if I, that muscle contracts in its normal line of force because it's a muscle, I'll see reorganization of the tissues more effectively? Not with just an electrical stimulator. Any muscle activation will cause that. Ah, of course. So if you could, I actually had a trainer this week. Now, the so more, I mean, can the you more, just flex your pecs all day long? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. That actually would work. Uh, you get tired, but it would work. The more goal <coughs> is for enhancing or facilitating performance and recovery. When you're injured, there's, right. a, there's a medical product you can use for that. Same technology. Same end result. But this this is about this this device is about clearing congestion after Correct. brutal workouts. After hard work. And I need to clear. For example, I think you could use Tour de France guys. Yes. Brutal hundred mile days. Jump on a bus because I have to go back, and they can't move on the bus. So what's the mechanism for that? To start clearing. 
So I, I'd say again, an interesting point that you're making there is I, I had a, what I do is I work with all pro teams. So I'm with the trainers of the pro team. That's basically my work. And I just, I just want to go on record as saying any pro team you can think of, Gary's been there. Is that right? That's pretty true. Pretty true. Pretty true. A little stretch. 99% pretty much. And what happens is that trainers have a, a view of how to solve the problem. And that view is based on this. I mean, this, this paradigm is controlling rice. I tell people rice is not nice. Rice is wrong. Well, okay, so if we have this one piece. We'll, 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 do, we'll talk more. The second piece is ice. And it, icing makes me numb. And if I'm numb, it doesn't hurt. And that's great, right? Well, it depends. If that is your goal, to make it not hurt, then ice will work. However, you have sacrificed a very important point. Because the ice actually causes a backflow of the interstitial of the of the lymphatic fluid into the interstitial space and actually creates more congestion, not less. That's not me saying it. That's, that's, a, that's a journal of, of, of emergency medicine not at all. reporting. You were telling me that there is extensive studies showing that ice works, right? How, how many studies did you say? To say it works? Wait, wait, you said that there's not a single study saying ice works. No, the studies clearly say the opposite. 100% of this, if you go into the, the peer-reviewed literature, icing congests tissues and stops healing. Of course it does. Well, but think about it. You, sometimes you don't need a study. Think about it. How could shutting off the signals between the muscles and the nerves on a nearly fully dependent muscle activation system, the lymphatic system, the venous return, they're passive systems. How could shutting off the signals between the muscles and the nerves help the evacuation of deoxygenated blood and waste? How could that possibly help? That's right. And, he, and, he, and he, here's our paradigm approach, a change, right? Is that this is not as, as conducive or effective. And in fact, it's counterproductive. It's counterproductive. Counterproductive. And uh, I'm trying to think, because this whole paleo movement, type 1 errors, I'm trying to think about all, the, uh, all of the icing that our ancestors were doing. And they weren't doing any icing, right? No. In fact, if you look at even some of the Ayurvedic traditions and the Chinese traditions, it's all about heat and about blood flow, right? So if we're trying to reperfuse tissues or recreate circulation, then this is not the answer. Well, I, I don't know who started it or how it happened. The best I can track it back, and you can go and Google and find it yourself, but how I tracked it back was in the 60s, when athletic trainers started working with athletes in the sidelines. That the only thing available was ice. It was cheap. And it did make you feel better temporarily. That's right. So it just became popular. But it also stops the prostaglandin release. It stops the whole process. It shuts off the signal between the muscles and the nerves. So it's ostensibly like taking an ibuprofen. No, actually the ibuprofen would be worse. Oh, good. Because that actually prevents the signal of the inflammatory response, which of course is another very large mistake. If you think about it, and how I ask is, do you seriously believe, honestly, do you seriously believe that the body's natural inflammatory response is a mistake. Now, did you actually believe that? If you don't believe it's a mistake, then that means it's right. So why are you preventing it? And in the literature, it's not even a question in the literature. Uh, in fact, if you want, you can put it up on your site. I have that we article will, we'll, we'll put up all that. We'll put the article up and some other research. Where it simply goes in the literature and says, well, what do you think about stopping the inflammatory response? The top guy in the field, this great quote is, there can be inflammation without healing. But there cannot be healing without inflammation. Bam, what just happened? This is, this is not a complicated idea. In every clinical textbook you'll find in this country, there is no exception. I've gone to at least 25 different sources. And I know there's more, and they'll all say the same thing. There are three phases to healing. The inflammatory response, the repair, and the remodel. It's not an, it's not an optional debate. These are the three things that happen. If you skip phase one, the inflammatory response, you have prevented phase two and three from going into place. Why would you do that? Well, I don't know why they do it, but I can tell you that you shouldn't. There's a great phrase called the drag of orthodoxy. We've done it because we've always done it, right? Well, and I suspect that the pharmaceuticals have a reasonable vested interest and they keep people motivated. Wait, wait, you're saying that ice is, is big business? Is that what? I ice is huge business. Look, this... In the last year, these guys came to me and said, hey, we want you to start to experiment with this. We have rehabbed post-surgery, ACLs, <coughs> trauma. We, get, we reduce swelling in, in a matter of days and hours. Uh, we've, we've pulled people's knee. We don't use ice anymore. Uh, it's not part of our practice. It's not part of our recommendation. In fact, uh, 
I, what I recommend that would change your life? Hot uh, tub. Yep, hot tub. I'm not going to say that. Hot tub know, time machine. Hot tub time machine. You know, because you but put also, two big guys in a hot tub, it gets hot. Well, that's true. But also when I fell with 1,080, nearly 1,100 pounds, uh, the first thing he told me was, don't ice. Wrap it up. And I wrapped it up and reduced the swelling immediately. And it was so simple to the point where my little girl was like, hey, your leg's not as swollen as it was before. Pretty easy. So if we, if we look, use compression... And what we expanded compression to mean muscle compression to clean out lymphatics, maybe that is the, the, our best mechanism for this, right? Com muscle activation around those passive vessels, that is the way the body was designed. It's not like we invented something. Whoever made the body no, 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 was no, brilliant. No. We invented it. Whatever. No, we didn't invent it. The human body is very specific in the way that it works. When you activate the muscles around your lymphatic and venous return, it pulls the deoxygenated blood and the waste out of the lower body. That's how it works. We didn't make that up. Ice sends it in the wrong direction. Any inflammatory block blocks the healing process. If these were opinions, I could see someone trying to debate me. These aren't opinions. Read the drug manufacturer's warning labels. Don't do that. It actually says <laughs> that. It's like leaky stuff. Don't do that. That's, that's bad. It's true. You're absolutely true. I'm not pointing And by the way, in, this that, is not debatable. in that article that I'm referencing that you can put up that I put together with, by the way, one of the authors is the editor-in-chief of the Physician Sports Medicine Journal. Oh, right. That's useful. So just a casual guy who has a view on this. The, a peer-reviewed study where they looked at all of the available literature, they concluded you don't want to pick any inflammatories. It stops the healing process. Why are you doing that? Why are you putting ice on that stops the signal between the muscles and the nerves around the lymphatic and the venous return that pulls out the deoxygenated blood and waste? Why are you doing that? We should, we should stop just for a second because people are going to be like, well, what about the ice bath? So what about the ice bath? If you think it feels good, it's not going to help with your, it's not going to help decongest the area. I know that if I drop my core temperature a little bit, it helps me sleep better. We're talking about oh, evacuating wait. the waste. That's right. It's a different conversation. What if I've just competed in a brutally hot day and my core temperature is like 103? Is a nice bath to bring my core temperature down? Would that be okay? I, I think that I would want to have a little medical supervision with that, but sure. So, oh, okay, so for that purpose. For, if I'm jumping in some cold water to start to, to bring my temperature back so I can restore homeostasis. I, I would want to have a little medical supervision if my core temperature were that high from the ocean. Right. And you're going to go into an ice bath. Let's say 102. I'm good with 102. Okay. <laughs> if I, let's say that you can find an egg on my head. Don't get in an ice bath at home. Don't do that, okay? But, uh, but that's still a different concept than what we're talking about here. Correct. What about contrast bath? When people talk, hey, I've got this swelling. I can get cold. I get hot. I get a cold. I get a hot. What, does that work? Um, sure, when it's hot. <laughs> ah, when, it, when it's hot. And here we go back around. It so, does not increase the circulation when it's cold. It decreases right. the circulation. But worse than decreasing the circulation, if that were all it was doing, that would be okay. But what's worse is it actually causes the fluid in the lymphatic vessels to backflow into the interstitial space and actually increase the congestion, which begets congestion. The body is pretty smart how this works. When the inflammatory response goes off, it's basically to send the macrophage to the site to eat up the dead stuff. I call it the cleanup group. The cleanup crew, the macrophage, is dragging the insulin-like growth factor, which is responsible for the cellular repair. So you definitely don't want to block the cleanup crew, the cleanup crew, and the repair guys. No, and the, don't block them from getting to the site. The good, the good studies even show that when you take an anti-inflammatory, we'll see chronic instability in joints that have healed without phase one. Well, there it's you weird. go. There you go. Crew, we got a room full of smart kids. Questions to the man. Does this, does this freak you out? No, not really. It makes I got, sense. A, I got a question. Um, if somebody like, is it possible someone's body is not good at? Regulating some of this, like sure, you know, there's always this, a I mean, you know, some people. Um, you know, I did pro wrestling for years, and I've done you know other things, and uh, it seems like there's some people out there that need anti-inflammatories. There right. seems to be because they're in pain. Why? And when they pain? take them, they feel better. But, but the question: Why are they in pain? I don't know, well, and very, they don't know. Very often, the pain is the result of the pressure from the congestion. So, sure, you can take something and make it not hurt, right. but you're still congested. Decongest the Just area, masking. and then tell me how you feel. Right. 
what happens is the pressure builds up from the congestion, which then the body views as a, uh, as a signal for more inflammatory response because it's viewing the, uh, the tissue that is contaminating the area as an enemy. So your congestion begets congestion. Make that go away. Don't, don't block it. So what we're talking about is pain management for an injured tissue. How do we get an athlete, keep an athlete going without pain from the pain spasm? That's a different conversation, even a conversation worthy of working with a physician. But if we're having pain resulting from swelling and we're blocking that, then, then we're always going right. to be in this bad loop. So we'll, let's clear the congestion. Let's clear the things. You know, when we say fix what you can fix, if the elephant in the room is swelling, you know, my rule of thumb in our clinic is if you're swollen, I can't tell what's going on. So let's, clear, let's deal with what we need to deal with first. That's dealt with compression and, and movement in a, with a device like Mark Pro in some kind of way. Even you said, hey, don't have a Mark Pro and you're in a cast, put your hand in and move your fingers. Move them. Let's do as much as you can. It's something real important about your question because it's, it, it's begging for the bigger question. And the bigger question to me is very simple. Is taking the anti-inflammatory going to decongest the area? And the answer is no. There's only one way for that waste to leave, and that's via the lymphatic vessels. The particles are too big to go back to the venules, which again, even the veins are pretty much a passive system. So without muscle activation, that deoxygenated blood and that waste can't evacuate. So taking an anti-inflammatory does what? It prevents the body's natural signal to solve the problem. It, to me, it's like there's a crash on the highway, and in your wisdom, you say, hey, every time I see fire trucks and tow trucks and ambulances, I get backed up in traffic. So there's a crash in front of them, and I'm not going to call in help. How's that work? You're not going to call in the macrophage to eat up the dead stuff, which is dragging the insulin like growth factor, which is responsible for the repair, so the cleanup and repair crew. You're not going to pull them to the site to solve the problem because of why? Because there's excess buildup at the end of the inflammatory cycle, why don't you ask instead, how do you evacuate the waste at the end of the cycle? Well, there's only one way. That's muscle activation around the lymphatic and the So how do you activate the muscles? That's the only question is, how do you activate the muscles, not which pill to take? So if I was, I mean, this is one of the problems actually with sitting for long periods of time is that the muscle activation in my legs drops off. Correct. I can't clear the lymphatic from even just the... Uh, the dependent limbs being down, I get pooling of those uh, fluid in my interstitial tissues, and that's the, one of the problems why we see DVTs and the people who don't sit, or who have to sit for long periods of time, why ankles get swollen on airplanes, is that we're not moving or compressing or clearing out the lymphatics. And by the way, nothing from your point, but that's not news. We all know that. So do we take an anti-inflammatory when our feet fall on an airplane? No, we get to walk around. I actually make films about my cankles. <laughs> Cankle.com, I think it's actually, it's really great. The issue though is that this, this is intuitive. We'll put, I know that this is counter to everything you've ever heard for the rest of your life, from the rest of your life. We're asking you to, we'll put up the research, we want to talk about it, and we want to have a conversation because we think this is a better way. And the Mobility Wad is about bringing in experts who can talk about their clinical practice. How many years of clinical practice doing this? Started in 73. I think I was born in 73. Not so at been all. practicing longer than, <laughs> been practicing and doing this longer. One of the stories that I, I want to talk about is, you told me a story real quick about uh, a guy scheduled for an amputation. Mm -hmm. um, the, will you talk about that just real quick? I think we're, we're running out of battery life here. We've got 10% left. But uh, it, I, I just want to keep in mind that the key here is perfusion. We want to get tissues perfused. We need to restore blood flow and all the things. This is this is how we heal. We just talked about this because this is a really powerful model. That's, now that's this, really stuck in my head. Th this involves our medical product. That's right. At that point, okay. the person was involved in medicine, not in, in, in exercise. Okay. And uh, the doctor was at the San Diego Rehab Hospital and uh, San Diego Veterans Hospital. And what happened was they were scheduling an amputation to take his foot off. And the reason for it was he had developed peripheral artery disease. He was a diabetic with peripheral artery disease, and his foot had basically turned black. And the uh, surgeon agreed to try our possible solution. So let's take it off next week. We'll, we'll try it over the weekend. Well, as it turns out, 
there was a surgeon. About three weeks later, they did remove the toe. And the doc, I personally interviewed the doc. He said, I wouldn't have believed if I didn't see it. And I said, Doc, let me ask you a question. Why was there a problem? He said, circulation. I said, and if you restore circulation, are you really amazed? That's the end of the question. Why would you be amazed? The body's amazing. Okay, great. But if you restore the circulation, of course the tissue regenerates. And that's all we do. We simply use the muscles to pump to bring in nourishment and flush out waste. And as, as you so uh, professionally titled it, groceries are gr garbage out and groceries in. i got to learn that because I really like it. I'm, I'm going to take credit for that later, by the way. <laughs> Tim. <laughs> Um, he, I actually made that up. No, I know he did. <laughs> His, you know, Jesse Burdick's body is not that impressive, but it's impressive. Hey, I want to thank you so much. I we will put all your contact information out there. Thank you guys for our panel. And uh, and, and uh, the only place we think ice belongs is in your margarita in the hot tub, which is okay. Right? That's okay? I was going to ask that. Great spot. <laughs> Great spot board. Thank you guys very much. Mobility what out?